So I, I'm not sure how to warn you about my mood today. So, um, and I think this is going to be really good, right? So it's not a bad mood. Um, it's a deep mood. So remember last week I was talking a little bit, I think last week about the Coldplay song and my part of the cure, part of the disease. Does anybody recall this as part of the, right? I want to do a variation on that for uh, different stuff. Okay, so, all right. So the idea there is that basically in that song by Coldplay, it's basically, it's kind of like existential awareness, to be honest, if you listen to this song, it is, is that part of the cure, part of the disease, right? You know, um, and, or extra awareness. So I want to couple that with, a couple of things. So there's this, um, and then how it ties into a yoga practice. And what do you do with your own secret, right? So there's this um, African children's book that my sister-in-law gave me. Um, and I don't know, I think it's from Zimbabwe, but I'm not sure. And I'm not going to get the story absolutely right, because I read it years ago, but I was thinking about it this morning. Um, which was this, this kid is out on a walk by himself and this magical bird lands or this beautiful bird and the bird starts talking to him. And maybe someone knows this story. I think it's kind of famous in this book. So, so that would be cool. Um, and, and, um, and the bird says, I'm a great omen. I think the bird says I can give you you know, some wishes, but you can't tell anybody that I'm here, that you've encountered me. And, and the kid, I think is kind of like, well, why not? And he goes, just don't do it. And so the kid can't, he's so excited. I think he tells a friend or, or something. Um, and a whole bunch of things start going wrong because he doesn't, he isn't able to keep, keep this, um, keep this, this encounter quiet because it was so magical. And, and after the, all the things, the calamities come and all these things, or it doesn't work out how he's hoping, he talks to his father about it. And the father says, well, you didn't follow what you're, what your magic omen told you to do. This is on you, right? And the story ends, right? And the idea, I think, one of the parables to it is that there's a there's things that you know, secrets that you know, or things that you know to be true um, that aren't necessarily for other ears, right? There's aspects of things that have your experience that are for yourself. So, and if anyone knows that 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 book I'm talking about, this story, I'd like to find it again. I think I might even have it. All right. So now take that idea and and um here's a anyone know Bonnie Vare? The group Bonnie Vare. So I don't know. I didn't really know that much about Bonnie Bear. And I'm starting to all of a sudden in the last like six months as I'm writing the book I'm writing, it, it's like some of his stuff, it's kind of taunting, kind of quiet, but the some of his songs are really intense. And this song is actually a wonderful love song, in my opinion, right? One of the ones that makes me really smile, but it's got this kind of brooding thing and he's he meets it's called blood bank and i think it's a quick story about meeting someone he marries whether this is true or not he meets her at the blood bank but um it's a, it's a weird song it's great though um so at one point after they talk about the blood bags they're looking at together that secret that you know that you know but you don't know how to tell. 
it fucks with your honor and it teases your head. But you know it's good, girl, because it's running you with red. I know it well. I know it well, right? So I had this wonderful encounter and he, they're drawn together and the, the, check out the lyrics of this song. It's a really good song. It's a really lovely love song, but that, that, that they're able to share this thing that is indescribable. And I think there's something important about, there's an indescribable part of your yoga practice that, that is between you and your yoga practice. I mean, and obviously Mind Body Solutions is dedicated to try to share it, but I think partly, I don't know about you, but I think that that one of the ways that, that our culture is a little bit sideways is going back to the parable, the, the African parable, our culture is all, all trying to get everyone to understand and call out the culture, trying to make their experiences known. And, and I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I also wonder if, and there, you know, once you really tell, if you have noticed this with your family, let's say you really try to explain what it is to actually be disabled. And once you get it all out there, they still don't get it. You know what I mean? Like no matter what you do to describe it, so you think it's going to lead to something, right? And and it nothing really changes, right? And so there's not just with disability. I think this is true with everybody. Everyone has a version of their own story that that is unsayable. And I think I, I look at a lot of what's trying to happen on social media as an example of what happens when you try to tell too much all the time or present your story is always wonderful, right? So my point in all this is that I hope you know that you have a secret, right? And it's between you and the universe or between you and your yoga practice. And yeah, you can try to get it all in words. I mean, obviously my body students is all about trying to make community around this, but I also know no matter how much we come together, there's still a part of your story that remains unmet, right? And that's okay. That's part of the experience. How do you support that other part? Remember, I'm always trying to give you and offer you and share with you, how do you, how can your reasons for you to practice yoga and what it actually does to the content of you that you never will quite directly know, but it needs support anyway. So one of the practical ways I try to unpack this is to tell you there's magic in Shavasana or the empty spaces in your body are what needs the nourishment. Or if you start stringing all the beads about what I say about the part of the where the yoga practice touches. So sit up straight and tall. So, you know, y'all, I always say that the, I've been saying for a while now that the empty space, you're actually, when you're centering in the beginning of class, you're actually opening a doorway to a different energy source. Isn't it funny to have dimensions of yourself that your mind will never actually know all the way? Right? It's one of those paradoxes. So as you exhale, what I love is that when you exhale and you did, before I did yoga, I always thought an exhale was just a dropping, right? But after 33 years of asana, it is a dropping. So I just pay attention to my exhale, keep my lips together, teeth slightly apart, relax the inside of my mouth. It is a dropping. But it's also an invitation to action. So exactly what looks like a submission 
is actually also an invitation, right? So it turns out there's two sides to this story at a level that only you're going to understand in your own practice. So I'm starting to soften around the temples, the jaw. So I'm trying to like realize that there's a spaciousness between what I'm trying to get across to you, this is my own case right now, and my experience that there's a freedom here, even though if I didn't, I feel like I didn't do a very good job in telling those quick stories, right? But how do you ground the parts of you and the dimensions of you? How do you let them in the room, first of all? And then how do you ground and expand them? So I'm starting to get that the exhale and the draw the inhale and the expansion and once I start connecting the two my exhale doesn't have to just be a drop I can actually expand on the exhalation too My spine moves closer to the world, more integrated in the world on what feels like the drop. I'm beginning to ground. Feel your feet on the floor, your sitting bones. Balance your head over your neck. Stay supple. Alert. Add action. Hit down with your sitting bones. Extend from the inner groin to the inner knee to the inner heel. Lift the chest. Drop the shoulder blades. Spread between the shoulder blades. Here comes fulfillment. Keep the spaciousness. So try not to grip too hard. If you need to repose now, repose. Start again. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Good, and then release. One of the things about Jada Harabanda, the lift of the sternum and the drop of the chin, is that, remember, the, 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 the yogis are figuring this out in seated positions, most likely, where their spine is connected to the earth. So the lift in the chest... And the activations coming directly out of the earth, right? And so ground it, rise up, expand it in your chest, 
drop the shoulder blades and spread them to ground it. So the rise comes up and the chin drops. Typically, the bandhas in yoga start from the base of the spine, well, actually below the spine, and travel up through the spine. I tend to hold to static near the top of my spine in this bandha. I tend to over grip because I'm trying to succeed. The chin drop, make sure that your action is humble. Raise your head up with closed eyes. Open your eyes. So one of the metaphorical and symbolic and literal ways that in I in in our method is I think it teaches almost everything about yoga in one in one instance, right? If you can generalize, and that is, and I hope if you ever, you know, can ask someone to help you do this. Have you had someone put their hand on the back of your sternum between your shoulder blades lightly? And the way you're going to be able to teach them how to do it is if you figure out how to do it on them, right? You're going to be able to figure out what it is to support the seat of their consciousness, right? And in order to teach them how to do it, Right. And they're and often they're not going to be patient to hear the levels that you've been you've been honing your ability to hear the subtle body, right? Right. The the sad thing is there are people out there that don't even know how to get supported on the subtle body, right? Because they don't they don't have the sensation awareness yet. But so this so on the back of the sternum, it's not just that you're activating there. Before you activate, spread your shoulder blades and drop them down. I would like you to try to allow for support right there. Right? And I hope you have, can conjure a handprint there. Right? And if you haven't, try to get a handprint memory there. From your, you know, like take your, take this part of your yoga practice, right? Really seriously. Because support from where you can't see on the seat of your consciousness is part of your secret. Good. And then release. So again, there are sensations that I hope, you know, these things that I say and try to share and describe in class, I hope you're kind of seeking it out in your life a little bit. So of course we're gonna move around because we don't wanna just be thinking about the most connected part of human being, right? This part of your spine. Can you believe that? What if you let that be true even for a day? So I'm moving it back and forth. So I'm I'm paying attention to the center of my chest and I'm moving it. I'm not just like, like I'm not just uh, moving back and forth, right? I'm paying attention to the center of my chest as I move it over my sitting bones. So like, Put your, like, follow it. Instead of just moving around quickly without thinking about it. Follow where the, your seat of consciousness, according to some ancient yogis, right? The seat of consciousness is changing its relationship over your base, Right? Right? That like, I'm just not, I, typically we think we're moving from our heads, you know, we're activating. Well, I, want, I want you to lower your center of gravity and start paying more attention 
to this as it's moving in different relationships to your base, right? So on this class, in terms of grounding, right? On this class, I'm wanting to figure like, how can I support this space, which I know is a secret, no matter how much I tell everyone about it, but I want to make sure that I'm practicing in a way that allows for this to get. So now when I lift, right, one of the reasons why I want your low back to decompress or not compress is so this lift gets more free, right? So I'm coming forward, I'm lifting up, I'm changing the compression on my back. So the center of my chest blooms more, right? So I'm actually doing it for reasons. <laughs> I'm actually realizing that these yogis past have been showing me stuff, right? It's not just for for movement's sake. I'm taking my legs wide because I do want to like open it up a little bit. So we're doing our typical warm up, right? Which is getting my body more on my mind's radar. So if you've been, you know, without movement, it's hard to keep your whole body on your mind's radar. Right, so you start introducing variation to get your mind to remember that, oh yeah, I've got groins, I've got legs, I've got sitting bones, I've got all this stuff. And left to its own devices, your mind will make your body really small, right? It'll like make it go into a singularity, like a big lump of clay, right? Careful not to overstretch your neck too much. Right, you don't want to mess up stuff too much. So over, and I'm shifting gravity again because I'm trying to get my my mind to go, oh yeah, wait, until you show me, I forget. I throw most of your body into the closet, right? And I don't have the light on. So you're just moving to turn on the light, right? And then and then move your feet back together. So I'm just like, that's just a drive-by on my groins, right? So if you can, if you can't, don't worry about it, but I'm gonna grab my my um, <clears throat> my leg up. So you, you, you can do this on the floor, but I, you know what's easy to do when you're a paraplegic? Forget you have feet, right? Really easy to do. So, <clears throat> Remember, I, some of you know this, I've said this many times, but one of the first things my yoga teacher wanted me to do, and if you can't, if you can't lift up your foot, just try to change the amount of input and be more conscious of it, right? Of your foot on the floor, on your foot on the pedal, like push on it, like get there to be more energy, right? <clears throat> more awareness on your feet. So, like I told you, one of the first things my yoga teacher wanted me to do was shake hands with my feet. Like the second time I ever saw her, she came and said, practice. It took me like five years to believe in the importance. I wanted to do the yoga poses. I didn't want to just like rub my feet. Are you kidding me? That seems stupid. All the barriers there were to my mind, but in a way, being more connected to your feet, you know, one of the really simple things that yoga does is actually make you expand to the outer edges of your body, right? It takes the spinal energy and through movement, asana makes the energy go, the blood flow go to the outer edges of your body. So I'm just squeezing my foot. I'm going like, oh, because without it, my mind more so than your body, my mind forgets that my foot's there, right? But 
I know whether you have full sensation or not, I'm pretty sure you don't pay attention to the full sensation of your feet, the inner sensation of your feet. So one of the ways that some of you that more, more um, sensation, direct sensation than I do, is that if you can get your arch, if you can put your thumb on your arch, and this can also, this sensation of grounding can also happen by putting your foot as flat on your foot pedal or as flat on your, on the floor as you can. But have you ever tried to make your arch sigh with glee and relief? Right? What if you actually took some things seriously? Like, dang, there's a muscle. Oh, see, I just hit the spot. I just got into a Calgon bath, right? I just found the way to grab my arch today in a way that went, ooh, it almost makes me want to sleep. That's a good one, right? And I know not to like just indulge there and they need variation, but I found the place on my body that releases energy, shows me part of my dimension. It doesn't have to just be your feet could be a place on your hands. How about the place, does anyone forget this place on their body right here where you get in your trapezius? So someone comes up and touches you there and you get, oh my God, it's like a huge, it's a, it's a fireworks. And I forgot that that's over clenched. So I'm going to my other foot. So if you can't do it on your feet, do it on another place on your body. Another one for me is how much tendonitis I have. When I actually remind my elbow and the muscles of my elbow that there's support there, I get a cascading amount of relief all over my body, right? Because my mind forgets. I forget the secret that is myself as it manifests through my body, right? There's so much of my potential that my mind forgets. So, oh, I'm trying to see if I can get as good a spot on my left arch. It's not the same. I don't feel my left foot as much. Oh, there it is. I just got one. That one's so good, my mouth is drying out, right? It's like, oh, there's a cascade. I like that. Did anyone as a kid have anyone do this little piggy went to market with your toes? This little piggy went home, right? In a way, that's not that dumb, right? To, to differentiate different toes, right? Or different fingers, right? So, so I'm spreading each toe going like, hey, wait, there's a party in there. There's a party between the second and third toe. There's movement, so I'm and so do it with your hands if you can't do it, right? Right? Or just try to create sensation where you differentiate something that you usually don't. I've been neglecting the, my different toes. I've been letting them be one big lump, I'm realizing right now. So I'm I'm unleashing the secret of my wholeness. But I, you know what I'm I'm opening it up to is how much my mind has narrowed my potential of my body, right? Because it thinks it knows better. Now I got to go back to the other foot because damn it, I got to get my toes to differentiate themselves. Then do it with your hands or different parts of your body. Because remember the insight from BK Sangar is when my mind, when my body's one, my mind's in pieces. When my body's in pieces, my mind can be one. There's a line that should keep you up at night. Right? So now I'm going to grab my ankle or you can grab your, oh, here's another good place for me. Holy cow, I forget about this one. When I take my tibia fibia and I push my my calf muscle into my tibia fibia oh that feels like a warm bath 
that's what I get when I do it on my forearm. So like this space here and this space here are similar, right? So it's like, oh, can I actually keep reminding my mind to not make my world so small. You make the world small when you make your body small. Right? Nobody told me I could feel my tibia fibia and my calf come together and have a different kind of party in my spine. What a surprise they didn't teach me that in physical therapy. It's because they weren't sitting around by themselves at lunch break and squeezing their tibia fibia into their calf and going like, damn, that feels good. They didn't know to pass it on. But the yogis do. Right? The yogis do. Different body work methodologies do. Has anyone had like a a, a body worker do a little quick little thing on each finger? Oh my God. You go like, that's a freaking party. That's a good thing. Right? I forget to take care of each side, each side of my the skin on my fingers, right? I forget stuff. How come even though it doesn't, it feels good, how come you don't do it to yourself? Because you're not listening to your bird on the middle of the safari, right? You're not listening. I know I'm not, right? God, the things I don't do to make myself feel better. It's stunning. Maybe you do everything right. I know I don't. Right? When I come forward, because now I've just created skin sensation on each side of my fingers. I'm going to tickle my palm a little bit. Right? Touch my wrist. Oh. I've got a lot of time trauma in my wrist. They broke my wrist. This one in particular has been bugging me, right? Because the way they broke it, I got betrayed. So I tend to avoid this part of my body right here, right in here, the juncture right here. So I'm not just, I'm touching my wrist. I'm thinking, why don't I do this more? My wrist aches all the time. How come I don't give it the support it needs more often? Well, other than the fact that I'm stupid, because I don't always want to time travel. But maybe I could just touch my wrist and not have to time travel. Right? This is a very symbolic wrist, you know. Right? It's got a whole bunch of trauma in it. Right? And then this one. This is an, if you read Waking, like, you know my wrists went through quite a harrowing experience, right? And so I'm like, making the space in there. I'm using the principle of when my body's in pieces, my mind can be one. Right? And I go back to the skin on my fingers. What? You mean you carry all your memories? Yeah, actually, you do. Right? Now I'm going to bring my hands into prayer. Elbows on the table for me today, right? Now I'm going to try to feel all the spaces, including squeezing my tibia into my calf, including wiggling my toes, right? Including supporting the hand of the back of my sternum. I'm going to start to live my secret. And I'm going to touch it with my breath. Prana follows consciousness more than it follows breath. 
What? Anyone, you know, they do acupressure or foot reflexology. You can have a certain point on one part of your body squeezed and it opens channels on different parts of your body. By the way, it should totally bake your noodles if that's true. But as I, my hands are in prayer, depending on how I do the pressure, th this is just for me. I don't, I don't know what your secret is, right? But when I when I change the pressure on different knuckles when my hands are together, right? I feel different shadows and lights crossing my legs. I can feel different color changes in the rest of my body, depending on where and how I put the pressure. More bone does one thing. That's more muscular, right? The in oh the inside and outside of each finger because I just touched them, that does something different too. Everything I'm constantly changing colors, right? Constantly. All right, that's all weird, right? That's all weird. I'm not ready to live in that world in every moment of every day. Right? No, thank you. I get to know it's there, though. Inhale up. Exhale, revolve. Nice little twist. Make it kind of happy. Keep the earth in the twist. What? What you talking about, Willis? What do you mean keep the earth in the twist? Does anyone know that's a reference to different strokes? What you talking about, Willis? Very bad sitcom, right? I liked it sometimes though. Couldn't watch the whole episodes. And then back to center, bringing earth into a pose, except that's part of what you do with the bandhas, right? And around. I know how to bring. So here I am ready to twist and my mind's going to think, oh, it's about how far I twist. That must be the ticket, right? And actually, I want to bring earth into the pose. How are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to drop my shoulder blades and lift my sternum and go down through my legs. And But I'm not going to do it too hard. And I lift on my collarbones to make sure I stay a little bit happy here. And I'm having them both. Good. And then come on back to center. Going to move around a little bit. Right? Because I want some back bending energy now. Right? So I'm going to go up and over my chest. So I'm going to make sure that <clears throat> anything I can do to recognize more of what's happening is probably going to help. So I'm going to, as I push my femur bones away, I'm going to do that a few times. Like I'm, I'm, I'm spreading my awareness horizontally over the surface of the base, right? So I'm pushing out like that, and then back. And then just to contrast it, I'm gonna push in on my knees. So my femur bone goes this way. Then I'm gonna contrast it again. Remember, I'm trying to get a multitude of sensations to come on my mind's radar. So I'm going back and forth so I can get the full potential of this movement right there, right? So I'm not gonna go back anymore because I don't wanna compress it. I'm trying to expand it. And I kind of wanna get it so, in fact, I'm gonna put one hand under one of my sits bones and lift up my sits bone a little bit so I can make sure or try to ensure that the connection 
So I'm pushing up on my sitting bone. Maybe. I'm wanting to make sure that when I'm going this way, when I lengthen out this way, I want to help my tailbone pop up, right? <clears throat> And obviously I can't, I can't physically do that, right? Well, a lot of you can't either, but I wanna get the potential. So I'm not just going this way. I'm not just going this way. I'm so, so in Setu Bandha, which is a really important pose, right? You're doing like, you're laying on the ground and you're doing a back bend. And, and because Engar often has you put like a block or something on, under your tailbone. So right at the life chakra, the, there's a, a reference that's making sure your life chakra goes forward into the world. So you end up becoming like a bridge. So imagine this is the river, right? In Setu Bhanda, your head's one end of the bridge and, and your feet are the other end of the bridge. And you've got like a, a pillar, the way the biggest thing I want you to practice it often um, is you want a pillar so you get to receive the life chakra propelling into the world, right? So we can't do that when we're sitting, right? Except, are you sure? I'm not so sure. I think I might be able to get the hint of it, right? Right. So I'm I'm doing all I'm doing all this weird stuff, trying to actually, I don't think I've ever tried to teach Setu Banda in the chair as much. This is like new territory for me. So it's like this way. We're doing this thing where I'm lengthening my hip flexors, right? Right. And I'm trying to go back and up over my chair. But I'm kind of like thirsty for that reference on my tailbone that makes my life chakra go up towards the sky, okay? But what's what's wild, Setu Ban has got a lot of wild stuff about it, right? All right, so, so I'm gonna feel this again, right? And then I'm gonna try to, by hook or by crook, I'm gonna try to get the sensation of, oh, see, I like that. So I just put my hand on my tailbone Right, and I pushed up with my fingers and I lifted my chest. So I start creating a unifying connection. You don't have to use your hand, but I want there to be a unifying connection between movement near your tailbone and lifting in your chest. Don't forget to keep breathing, right? Right, all right, so, and I'm better with using this arm, but if, because I'm a yogi, I'm gonna have to do it the other way too, which I don't like as well. So I can't get in my tailbone because my shoulder doesn't want to, but I'm gonna push on my sitting bone a little bit. So I'm gonna get this movement and this connection. I hope you can see it. So I'm pushing up on my base and I'm catching it with my chest, right? And I'm letting my head go slightly back. So I'm creating a unifying action, remember, the thing about being paralyzed and also in a, in a wheelchair when you're trying to do these poses, you don't get the luxury of having unearned unification between movements, right? An able-bodied person doesn't even know what they're doing because they don't know their movements are so unearned, right? I'm having to make this weird connection between my tailbone and my chest and eventually my head coming back. So I like it this way. So I'm like, oh, I got this one good. I'm trying to find a rhythm. So if you're just moving your head, which is fine, make sure you put your consciousness, your pranic awareness in your tailbone. And when you move your head back, bring your tailbone with you. By the way, if we could just teach our, my, if I could just teach my 89 year old mom as she stands up to make a more unified connection between her tailbone and her chest, she'd be able to get up easier, but you won't listen to me. God damn it. I can't teach, I can't teach my mom. What the hell? Oh, well, it's part of it. She can only listen to her son so far, but I'm just making this connection. It's not her fault even. We don't get to help the people we love the most, right? All right, 
and then release or the people we love. So now I've got this connection. So when I go back to moving gravity forward and back, right, I'm trying to keep that feeling of a reference on my tailbone as part of what's happening, right? Now, oh no, lions and tigers. This class goes till 11.30, just so you know. I'm joking, but it could. All right, so I'm back to this thing. So now, when I push out my femur bones, by the way, so I'm trying to get my tailbone, the bone, to interact with my femur bone, the bone, right? So when I'm pushing out my legs, connecting to the earth by going down, lengthening my bone horizontally across the, the earth, right? I'm trying to get my tailbone to join so my chest can open with company, right? So I'm going this, this, Oh, that's a good one, right? And I'm gonna come back. I'm not gonna do the full pose yet. And I'm gonna come into it again. I'm gonna pop into it. Oh, right. And try to get this rhythm. So I'm trying to get there to be a coordinated rhythm. Remember, I'm trying to put sensations on the, my mind's radar. My hands are here. I've been pushing on my tailbone. I'm trying to get my chest in, in engaged, right? So I'm practicing. Those three quadrant, here, here, to here, right? Femur bone, pardon me, femur bones to tailbone to chest. I'm just doing this little movement right here. Well, I like that, right? Because in a second, I'm going to take my head back. You don't have to take your head back. In some, fact, some of you shouldn't take your head back, right? So I'm going to go here, here, up. Right? I'm not just backbending as I'm, in order to make it just not be a backbend, I'm trying to remember the sensation of reference near my tailbone. Right? Because I'm trying to make this more like Setu Banda, which is a backbend. But the life chakra, the base of your spine, is actually getting pushed into the world. So now I'm going to remind myself. I'm going to push on my tailbone again, right? So I'm doing this thing to make sure on this last one doing it, I want to get this connection to my tailbone, my chest, and raising my chin now. Tailbone, chest, chin. Tailbone, chest, chin. Because on this final couple of times at the pose, I'm going from where my feet are to my feel bone, femur bones, to my tailbone, to my chest, to my chin, right? Feet, femur, tailbone, chest, chin. One more time. Feet. Femurs. Tailbone. Chest. Chin. Oh dear, it's not just one more time. So here's the deal, right? In Setu Banda, you're not taking your head back like this, like you would in Urvidanirasana or upward facing bow, right? You're actually now, this is where the mind blowing is, right? In Setu Banda, you're a kind of also in a version of shoulder stand, which is this Banda. Right? The chest is up, the chin is dropped. Because if you're laying flat on the ground, remember, people have to walk onto the bridge and off the bridge. 
So it turns out that in 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 setu banda, when you're doing it on the ground, your feet are on the floor. That's one side of the bridge. They walk over you, and then they they come off your chest, off the steepest part of the bridge, and then they come and they walk off your face, and they get back to the back to the ground, right? So it's called bridge pose, right? And so we're going to add this extra variable, right? So instead of going just back, you're going to go back and then we're going to drop the chin without interrupting the head going back, okay? Oh, for God's sakes, what a mess, right? So here we go. Feet, that'd be, remember, so Prashanta Angar talks about Setubanda. Because Angar calls Setubanda um, God's gift to humankind, right? And um, Prashant, his son, talks about Setubanda this way. He says you're connecting the two shores of the self. So you got one shore where your feet is, one shore, shore where your head is, and you're the bridge over the river, right? All right, so your feet, one side of the bridge, right? You're trying to have the bridge start to happen. So you're going to go and push your femur bones away. The apex of the bridge is your tailbone, right? So now you got to get that, that connection to your tailbone, right? And now your chest starts to open. You want to take the head back so you do it first, but then you take your chin down. Ooh, that brings a lot of earth. Pardon me. I gotta like take that in for a second. When I drop my chin there, not don't do it too hard because that'll screw up your pose. I'm gonna do that again. So when when you're when you don't take your head flying back, when you drop your chin at the very end of it, it brings the earth back. So so down, expand, up, chest, so feet to femur to tail one to chest, and then drop the chin a little bit. Ooh, that is the way to ground the bridge. Remember your feet and your drop chin. Good, and then release. One more time, right at the end here, I'm losing people that I must be a bridge too far on the description, right? So one more time. I like the idea of being a bridge for people, right? Right. And by the way, the bridge has got two-way traffic. It's not just a one-way bridge. Okay, so feet, femur, tailbone, chest, expanse, grounding. Good, and then release. Hmm. <laughs> Quick little twist. Inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. I'm in forward. For grounding symmetry. Finding my feet, finding my sitting bones. Finding each side of my breastbone. Each shoulder, because I want the nourishment of Shavasana to come in equally on each side. So I'm trying to set the train tracks. Awareness of each shoulder blade. Awareness of my feet, my hands. The bones on my toes, the bones on my fingers, the joints, all of it. So when I lean back into my chair and take its support, the support goes everywhere because prana 
follows consciousness. Let the chair touch everything. Support everything. Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Honor the secret. Start to bring yourself back. Slightly deeper inhalation. Slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes. Close them again if it's like a little much. Then open them. You know, being able to coordinate different places in your spine and then use that as a map. But in order to coordinate, you have to be able to differentiate more and more parts of your body. So your mind can like, it's funny how the mind will make the body become a lump as opposed to an expansive potential, right? And that's, freedom is going to depend on the expansive potential, not just coming from here, right? Coming from body to mind. And that's a secret. 
All right. So have a good week.